Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we are doing a summary of all the grade 11 work that we have covered in financial maths. Now the main thing of grade 11 is that you had done adjustments. Interest was not just compounded yearly as in grade 10. It is now compounded at different times. So we had the half yearly, the quarterly, monthly, daily and every four months. Now what happens when they compound it differently is that the N and the I are affected. So when it's half yearly we'll change it by 2, when it's quarterly we'll change it by 4, monthly we change it by 12, daily 365 unless stated otherwise and every 4 months means 3 times. We adjust the N by multiplying it and we adjust the I by dividing it. Let's take the following example. Calculate the value of 10,000 Rand if it was compounded quarterly at an interest of 9,2%. Okay, when we starting, the basic rule is to write down your P. Your P is 10,000 Rand. Your A we don't have. That's what we want to calculate. Our interest is 9,2 over 100 and our N I, let's say after five years so our n is five but they said compounded quarterly quarterly means we have an adjustment of four so i'm going to divide my interest by four and i'm going to times my n by four I prefer writing my interest as a fraction because with financial math when you round off too early you get the incorrect answer. Now compounded tells me I'm using the compound formula. Then it's simply substitution and use your calculator. If I gave you a, a similar question Calculate 10,000 Rand after 5 years of investment at a simple interest of 9,2%. Now, when we're doing simple interest, there is no adjustment like this table. It's simply we're going to put in our P, our I is 9,2%, and our N is 5. The formula is A is equal to P1 plus I times N, close brackets. So it's not a power. Notice that the formulas for compound interest and for simple interest is different. Right, simply substitute Use your calculator to get the answer and we have A is equal to 14,600. Right, let's go to the next section. Okay, you are aware of the two different formulas. You are aware that with compound interest we have an adjustment whereas in with simple interest we do not have an adjustment. Then we have effective interest. Now effective interest rates means the bank gives us a nominal interest rate. Nominal means what they say they're giving us. But when it's compounded monthly it becomes to our advantage which means this is what we actually get. So the bank quotes you 12% because you're compounding it monthly, you are getting interest and on that interest you're getting more money and in the end result you actually get a bigger interest rate without it really clearly being shown. So what they do is they want to know what is the effective interest rate. We mistake. When we're doing this, we're going to use the formula. We 
when we are adjusting. We know interest is only calculated for a year. So for I and N, we only work with one year. This is the biggest mistake pupils make. In the question, they'd like to say, a, um, a person invested so much money for 10 years. Calculate the effective interest rate. The 10 years is irrelevant. You don't need the 10 years. You know effective interest rate only works with one. The only thing you need is the interest and how often is it compounded. So if I say calculate the effective interest rate of 14% per annum compounded monthly. Now you really don't need an amount. You don't need how many years because we're always going to work with one year. So what we are interested in is the I and the N. The N is one year but since it is compounded monthly we know that it is times 12 and then our interest is 14 over 100 but again because it is compounded monthly we are going to divide by 12. Now let's go to the formula we have 1 plus the effective interest rate is equal to 1 plus 7 over 600 to the power of 12. You can use your calculator. Right, notice again that I am rounding off to many places. Try and round off to five or six places because with interest if you round off too early it will give you the incorrect answer in the final answer. Now we're going to take the one over so we subtract one which means we have i is equal to 0, 0,1493 but what do I do? When we calculated i it was over 100 so we now need to times by 100 because it's a percentage that we are seeking. So our final answer is that the interest rate is equal to 14,93, which means in the year you are getting a benefit of 0,93%. Right, the next thing we're doing is the timelines. Now, the timeline basically means you're going to take your concept of adjusting. As you adjust your N and I, you're also going to have different stops. As soon as you have a change, you have to stop and start calculating. Right, let's take the following question. We have an investment right in the beginning where we are starting with 7,200 Rand. What happens is that after two years you stop because we are investing another 3,000 Rand. So we are adding 3,000 Rand. Then we are continuing but we know we are going till six years. But from this point, two years, till the end of six years is only four years. Right, through this entire investment, we know we are getting a 9% interest rate, but it is compounded every three months. Right, we're going to start with the initial pain starting from 7,200. Now our interest is 9 over 100. But if they say every three months, it means in March, in June, in September, and December, they are doing a calculation. So how many times in the year are they doing a calculation? They are doing it four times, which will give us 9 over 400. Now look at our N. We are going to stop when there's a change. So after two years, there's a change. So the end that we're going to work with is only two years. But since it is every three months, we're going to times it by four, which will give us eight. And then use our formula. Substitute and then use your calculator to give a final answer. Right, we got 8,602,78. But we are going to add this 3,000 rand. Now remember, use the answer feature on your calculator. So you don't go and retype in these numbers. 
you simply say answer plus 3000 rain and we know if we're doing the pain from this two years the p is going to equal to so we have added the 3000 rand because that was the change our value in the bank was 8602 rand comma 78 we added the 3000 rand and we're going to put it into our p now our interest has still stayed the same so it's still 9 over 400 but the amount of years from two years to the six years is only four years so we're going to say four times four which gives us an n of 16. Then we go to our formula. We substitute our values. And you put it in your calculator. So the total value of the investment after six years is 16,564.38. Right, let's go to the next section. Now, depreciation, there are two types. You get straight line and you get reducing balance. When we're doing straight line, it's exactly like simple interest, except it's a negative. And when we're doing reducing balance, it's exactly like compound, except it is a negative. The method is exactly the same. You write down your pain, you substitute, and you get your answer. Right. When we start, we're going to write down our pain. We're going to do A first, which is straight line. Our P is 15,000 Rand. Our interest is 12%, which is 12 over 100. And our years is 3 years. We know the formula is A is equal to P into 1 minus I times N. Substitute what you have. Put it in your calculator. 150,000 open brackets 1 minus 12 over 100 times 3 which will equal to 96,000 right so the method is exactly the same you write down your pain you substitute your whatever information you have and then you simply solve right let's do B the reducing balance our P is 150,000, our I is 14% and our N is still 3 years. The formula is A is equal to P, open brackets, 1 minus I to the power of N. So we have 150,000, open brackets, 1 minus 14 over 100 to the power of 3 which gives us an amount of 95,408 rand and 40 cents. All right. Now, the last part of our summary is to calculate the interest rate. Right. If I say calculate the interest rate for an amount to double after eight years. Now, sometimes when they are not very specific and they don't give you an amount because we know it's going to double you can use any amount you want the method is still the same you start with your pain you substitute what you have now if I say that the interest rate is compounded quarterly that means that there's an adju adjustment to your I and your N. Okay, since they didn't give us an amount, let us take a thousand rand and the double of it would be two thousand rand. Now you could take any amount, five hundred and the double is a thousand, two thousand and the double is four thousand. Our I, we don't know what it is. Our N, we know it's eight years, but it is compounded quarterly, which means that I'm going to times it by four. If I had an interest rate, what would it look like? It would be x over 100, and then I would divide it by 4. Now, we don't have i, and we're not going to put this in. But we are going to go to our formula and substitute what we have. Now, 
Now let's say when you had looked at this before, a teacher might have put x and 2x. Now it wouldn't matter because had I put x and 2x, let's do the same thing but I'm now going to put x and 2x, okay? Okay, the formula says we want to get i alone. So I'm going to divide by a thousand and I'm going to divide by a thousand, which means I've got two is equal to one plus i to the power of 32. If I was dividing by x and dividing by x, I would get two is equal to one plus i to the power of 32. So what I'm trying to show you is that if a person uses x and two x, their final answer would be exactly the same if you use a number. If you use a variable, it's exactly the same if you use a number. So if you can't use x's and y's and they confuse you, use a number, it's fine, you're going to be okay. Right, now, how do I get rid of the 32? I'm going to 32 root it. Use your calculator. There's a specific feature on your calculator that would give you this. It's a root sign with two squares. It's a shift. You're going to use the shift button to make use of this feature. So we're going to have 1 plus i is going to equal to 1 comma 021897. Now again, look, I am writing down at least six places after the decimal. Then I'm going to subtract 1 because I'm going to move over this one, that would give me i is equal to 0, 0,021897. But that is not the end of our answer. We know that i is equal to x over 100 divided by 4, because that's what I would have done to this interest rate. That's how I would have edited or changed the interest rate. So I'm bringing down this adjustment, I'm replacing it into the interest or into the I to get my total value of interest. It's much like simultaneous equations where you would now equate the equations. You're going to now solve for that unknown x, so since it's dividing by 4, you're going to times by 4. Since it's dividing by 100, you're going to times it by 100, which will give us an interest rate of 8,76. Thank you for watching.